and welcome to the book nook. I'm 25. Yay! Oh, I'm a quarter of a century old. It was my birthday yesterday. I was 25. I am 25. You know what? It took me about a year to remember that I was 24. I feel like I might have more luck remembering I'm 25, seeing as it's the old quarter of a century. <laughs> I didn't really do much for my birthday. I'm not really one for doing much in general, but I went out for lots and lots of drinks with my lovely work friends on Wednesday night. Yes, so I woke up hungover on my birthday and just spent the day watching lots of trashy TV. And then I went out for dinner with my family and came home and watched Doctor Who. So in my last couple of videos, I mentioned that my book hauling had got a bit out of hand. I'd been buying books faster than anybody could read them, let alone just me. And I was contemplating doing a bit of a book buying ban for the rest of May. But as it was my birthday yesterday, and I've been using that as an excuse for the past week or so, and saying, okay, well, I'll buy myself lots of books for my birthday, and then I'll stop after my birthday, I've got some books to haul. The first ones I'm going to briefly mention are the ones that have been sent to me by publishers in the week before my birthday. So the first one I want to briefly mention is A Stranger in the House by Shari Lapiner, sent to me kindly by the guys over at Bantam. I read The Couple Next Door last year after everyone was going on about it and saying how good it was and it was a pretty good thriller. I'm not a massive thriller or crime reader so I always find them sort of faintly ridiculous but that's what I love about them, don't get me wrong, I'm not sort of dissing on it. I love that it's sort of faintly ridiculous and there's always some mad conceit in there that you've got to try and... It's the suspension of disbelief that I love in thrillers. So this one I'm quite excited about as well. Why would you run scared from a happy home? You're waiting for your beloved husband to get home from work. You're making dinner, looking forward to hearing about his day. That's the last thing you remember. You wake up in hospital with no idea how you got there. They tell you you were in an accident, you lost control of your car while driving in a dangerous part of town. The police suspect you're up to no good, but your husband refuses to believe it. Your best friend is not so sure, and even you don't know what to believe. <laughs> the next one sent to me by the guys over at Jonathan Cape was The Idiot by Elif Batuman. I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that wrong. Probably. Gorgeous cover. Look at that. Isn't that good? There's been a fair bit of talk about this one, I think, mainly from sort of American book commentators and, and things like that, but I've been really quite excited about this one, so let's have a little look at the blurb. Selin, a tall, highly strung Turkish-American from New Jersey, turns up at Harvard and finds herself dangerously overwhelmed by the challenges and possibilities of adulthood. She studies linguistics and literature, teaches ESL, and spends a lot of time thinking about what language and languages can and cannot do. Along the way, she befriends Svetlana, a cosmopolitan Serb, and obsesses over Ivan, a mathematician from Hungary. The two conduct a hilarious relationship that culminates with Selin spending the summer teaching English in a Hungarian village and enduring a series of surprising excursions. Throughout her journeys, Selin ponders profound questions about how culture and language shape who we are, how difficult it is to be a writer, and how baffling love is. So this one looks quite exciting, as I say, heard a lot about this one. A little bit of a chunk stuff, but I'm going to get onto this one quite soon, I think. Next up, from the lovely guys over at Granta, they timed this to perfection. This one actually arrived on my birthday when I had to pop into work to pick up some bits, so that was wonderful timing. And that is Strange Heart Beating by Ellie Goldstone. I'm sure you've seen this one doing the rounds on Booktube, and it's basically a sort of retelling of Later and the Swan. Now, I don't know much about Later and the Swan. I'm not massively up on all my myths. Seb's beautiful, beloved wife, Leda, has been killed by a swan. Sorting through her belongings after her death, he comes across a packet of unopened letters from Olaf a man whom Leda had never mentioned. Floundering professionally and sunk by grief, he decides to travel to Leda's home village in Latvia to patch her story together. But with each new person that he turns to for answers, Seb is met instead by more questions about Leda, her past and their life together. So this one looks really good. As I say, I've heard a lot about this. A lot of people who've already read it said it's absolutely wonderful. So I think I'm going to tuck into this one quite soon. Now, simply because I have got quite a large stack of the ones that I've bought for myself um, in the last oh, week. God, this is really bad, isn't it? I'm going to more or less sort of race through them because otherwise this video will be too long again. But here are a few that I bought myself. Well, here are all of the ones that I bought myself. Firstly, I got myself a copy of The Castle Cross, The Magnet Carter by Kia Cawthron. I'd heard Simon over at Savage Reads talking about this one. And I know he's read like a fair few sort of American epics a lot of them exploring sort of racial history in America and this one sounds really good so I got this one over from America and it is a proper chunkster the words are quite quite small but this one's quite exciting uh, two black brothers from Maryland and two white brothers from rural Al Al Alaba rural Alabama so this one sounds quite interesting quite exciting I've been doing this whole thing out of focus again I have, haven't I so a bit of an American epic 
that I will probably get around to eventually. Possibly a bit too much of a chunk for me right now, but it's definitely one that I want to get around to reading. Especially when it gets nearer to hearing about when it's going to come out in the UK, I will definitely give this one a go. Next one I grabbed myself a copy of was Granter's Best of Young American Novelists Volume 3. So you can see my light reflecting there. Shiny cover. There are quite a few names on here that I recognise from books that I've either read or heard about. You've got people like Emma Klein and I've read The Girls, which was quite good. Joshua Cohen and I've got his book Book of Numbers with a gorgeous cover. And you've got people like Lauren Groff and I loved Fates and Furies, Yard Yassi. I still haven't read Homegoing yet, but I will soon. You've got Garth Risk Halberg, Greg Jackson, Ben Lerner, and Otessa Mesh Moshfeg. Oh, I always pronounce her name wrong. Otessa Moshfeg and Claire Vey Watkins. And I've heard mixed things about Gold Fame Citrus, but I am quite excited to give this one a go. Dip into some of the exciting American novelists that are coming up. So that one I will be jumping on shortly. Then another one that I picked up from Granta, Strange Labyrinth by Will Ashon. And I saw lots of people getting sent copies of this where it was wrapped up in brown paper with like three claw rips out of it where you could see this lovely green cover poking through so I thought well okay I'm gonna get it I might wrap it up myself in brown paper I'm not going to actually do that that would be sad I might I'm just gonna read the blurb from this one because I think it'll sum up better than I can in litter strewn Epping Forest on the edge of London might a writer find magic in between fake nature and real nature he will certainly discover filthy graffiti and frightening dogs as well as robbers lovers ghosts and poets but will he find himself or a version of himself he might learn something from Strange Labyrinth is a quest narrative, arguing that we shouldn't get lost in order to find ourselves, but solely to accept that we are lost in the first place. It is a singular blend of landscape writing, political indignation, cultural history, and wit from a startling new voice in non-fiction. So I'm very excited about this one. So many people have come in asking about this one, and just even looking at the cover, people have been very intrigued. So I'm going to give this one a go so I can talk to people about it more. Now, another one from Granta is Night Waking by Sarah Moss that I picked up. Now, I read The Tidal Zone last year and I absolutely adored it. I'd never read any Sarah Moss before, but I know that she's going to be one of my favourite authors. So I've picked up Night Waking because, from what I can gather, this is the first in the sort of loose trilogy of bodies of light and signs of... something... I'll correct myself in the thingy down below. I loved The Tidal Zone. I absolutely love Sarah Moss's sort of writing style. Her voice is absolutely beautiful. So I'm really excited to give this one a go soon. Then an author that I know I love is John McGregor and I picked up a copy of Even the Dogs. I read, this isn't the sort of thing that happens to somebody like you, years ago, his collection of short stories and absolutely loved it. I recently read If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things because a friend of mine kept on saying to me, have you read that one by John McGregor? And she kept on saying it to me. So I finally read that one and it was absolutely gorgeous. Just blew me away. So before I read Reservoir 13, his latest one, which I do have a copy of, I want to read Even the Dogs, and this one is about a man whose body is found left um, in his flat, and people are sort of trying to piece together his life and find out a bit more about him. And John McGregor's style, and if this one is anything like it, which I imagine it will be, it's this slightly sort of abstract, very poetic quality writing that just, it is this unfurling of layers and just peeling away gradually and it's absolutely beautiful, so I'm very excited to read this one very, very soon. I feel like I'm talking super, super quickly today and like I'm almost sort of running out of breath at the end of each sentence. But I haven't filmed a video in about a week now because the last two hauls I filmed in one sitting and I had a lot of stuff on before my birthday. So I'm kind of like a little bit out of practice. Hmm, sorry. Now this month the new book by Laurent Benet comes out called The Seventh Function of Language and I still have not read H H H H or as my colleagues at work call it, <laughs> cat's here again. So I decided to pick up a copy of this and get around to reading this. My cat is now rubbing himself up against the tripod, so if things get a bit wobbly, it's his fault. So I picked myself up a copy of HHHH, which is about an attempt, a fictionalised account, obviously, of an attempt to assassinate Reinhard Heydrich, chief of the Nazi secret services. And this one, loads of people have raved about this one and said it's absolutely fantastic. So I wanted to get a feel for Binet's writing style before I start the seventh function of language, which I'm really excited to read from everything I hear about it. So I'm going to give this one a go quite soon. 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 On a similar note to HHHH, I picked up a copy of Blitzed by Norman Ola. Now this is a bit of non-fiction. <laughs> This is a non-fiction book which is the untold story of the Third Reich's relationship with drugs, including cocaine, heroin, morphine, and above all, methamphetamines, aka crystal meth. So it's about how all the Nazis were off their faces. And it just sounds absolutely fascinating. There's apparently a lot of notes in here from Hitler's uh, sort of private physician who had all these coded notes so that 
if so that he wouldn't get in trouble for for supplying all these drugs and they've been decoded and it sounds absolutely fantastic so i'm really excited to get digging into this one very very soon again i'm really excited i need i need a thesaurus how have i bought all these books and not bought myself a bloody thesaurus Another non-fiction one I picked up was the paperback copy of The Good Immigrant. Now I have got the hardback copy and I've been making my way through some of the essays slowly but surely, but I had to get a copy of the paperback as well because I just want to be carrying this around with me all the time. It's essentially a collection of essays about what it means to be an immigrant in society now. And it was crowdfunded, edited by Nika Shukla, and you've got these fantastic, incisive, cutting essays from so many, so many people in here. You've got people like Riz Ahmed, Sarah Sahim, Wei Min Kam, Bim Adewunmi, Nish Kumar. You've got, it's just, it's just fantastic. The ones that I've read so far are really incredibly moving, so incisive, so I urge you to go and pick up a copy of The Good Immigrant. There's a quote on the back here from The Independent saying, if I could, I'd push a copy of this through the letterbox of every front door in Britain, and at the moment that could not be more bloody right so go and get yourself a copy read it and give it to all your friends all your neighbors i don't just just do it just go get this one go on go on i'm getting all serious now but do it another one i picked up ostensibly for my birthday is a copy of to the bright edge of the world by eowyn ivy now i haven't read the snow child so i've never read any eowyn ivy before but i've heard a lot of people saying that she's an absolutely wonderful writer simon over at savage reads who as i say i trust his recommendations quite a lot. He's a big fan of Ao and Ivy, so I picked this one up as it came out in paperback. It's a bit of historical fiction about a lieutenant who goes on a mission to Alaska to navigate the Wolverine River, and it's a bit about him and his band of men out there, but also his wife who is left behind, and what life is like for her when she's left behind. It's, it's historical fiction, and I've never been a huge fan of historical fiction, not really sure why, and in the last year or so, things like The Essex Serpent, which I absolutely loved, have convinced me to maybe, you know, give it a try. I could be wrong about historical fiction, I probably am. So I'm, I'm reading a few more that are sort of historical fiction type books. I can't talk today. So yeah, I'm excited to give Ao and Ivy a go and see what this one is like. Now I picked up this one yesterday, on my actual birthday, and that is Malis de Karangal's Mend the Living. Now this Despite the sticker that says shortlist, it actually won the Welcome Book Prize this year. Now the Welcome Book Prize, which is done by the Welcome Society, is a prize that rewards writers, non-fiction and fiction, that write about sort of medicine and science and things like that. Now this one I've not sort of heard much about before it won. I think because there was the, the title zone was on the shortlist, I was sort of backing that all the way and there were a few non-fiction titles that I'd heard about. This one kind of slipped under the radar for me. But I'm going to read the blurb here. In the depths of a winter's night, the heart of Simon Limbo is resting, readying itself for the day to come. In a few hours' time, just before six, his alarm will go off and he will venture into the freezing dawn, drive to the beach and go surfing with his friends. A trip he has made hundreds of times, and yet today, the heart of Simon Limbo will encounter a very different course. But for now, the black box of his body is free to leap, swell, melt and sink, just as it has throughout the years of Simon's young life. 5.50am. This is his heart, and here is its story. I'm gonna be honest, it sounds like one that will probably make me cry a little bit, but I'll give it a go, and we'll see how we get on with that one. Now, two books I picked up the other day from Serpent's Tale that I'm really excited about. First one is by Jarrett Kobeck, I Hate the Internet. Now, I heard a lot about this one when it first came out, and we had customers coming in for it, sort of like, on a daily basis, and I kept on meaning to get myself a copy and never did, but picked this up when it came in in paperback. Now it says on the back here, it's a furious, grotesque, hilarious satire of life among the victims of the internet age. So it sounds like something probably modern and contemporary. So I'm probably going to give this one a go soon, I don't know why, I, I feel like this is one that's going to jump up the list. So I'm going to give that one a go soon. And the second one I picked up was Torpor by Chris Krauss. Now it says it's a sort of part prequel, part sequel to I Love Dick, which I still haven't actually read. So I'm not really sure how soon to dig into this one, to be honest. Hmm. But it's two former New Yorkers who are sort of tired of their life in New York, so they decide to set off across the former Soviet bloc to adopt a Romanian orphan. As you do. Now, because it is a part prequel, part sequel to Isla Dick, as I say, I'm not sure how soon I will get around to this one. So let me know, have you read Isla Dick and this one? Does it matter which way around I read them? I'm intrigued to know. I had just finished filming and the postman arrived with another book. 
Gina Walsdorf's Security. Now this is another one that I saw on Simon's channel over at Savage Reads when he did a video on American books that he'd hauled recently, which I will link that video down below. So as well as the Castle Cross and the Magna Carta, of the ones that he talked about, I thought this one looked really good. So Security by Gina Walsdorf. It's, from what I can gather, it's a bit of a sort of horror -y type book. Mandalay Resort is a gleaming new 20-storey hotel on the California coast. It's about to open its doors and the world, at least those with the means to afford it, will be welcomed into a palace of opulence and unparalleled security. But someone is determined that Mandalay will never open. The staff has no idea that their every move is being watched and over the next 12 hours they will be killed off one by one. Writing in the tradition of Edgar Allan Poe and Stephen King and with a deep bow to Daphne du Maurier, author Gina Walsdorf pairs narrative ingenuity and razor wire prose with quick twists, sharp turns and gasp inducing terror. So this one sounds quite exciting. I don't tend to read much sort of horror or spooky scary books. Um, but this one, and recently Josh Malaman's Birdcage has really piqued my interest, so if anyone's read that one, let me know. And if any of you have read Security by Gina Walsdorf, let me know. Is it any good? Because I'm quite excited. So that's what I've bought myself in the last couple of weeks. With every one of them, I have used the excuse that it's my birthday coming up. Now, of course, my birthday has been, my birthday has gone, which I think explains my... Oh, I'm so frazzled today when I'm filming this. I'm wondering if it's like post-birthday blues. Mm. So I'm a bit frazzled. Not, not quite on my game. Sorry, guys. I barely even know what I'm talking about at the moment, to be quite honest with you. But the good news is I've got a week off work now, and I'm planning on trying to actually read a load of these books that I just keep buying. I'm just actually going to spend some time sitting, reading, or go out for coffee and sit and read. So I'm hoping to get my way, make my way through a lot of these in the next week. Not like all of them, I'm not that good. So I expect I will probably film a little early May wrap-up slash currently reading video in a few days. I will, I promise, get around to doing that graphic novel video that I keep mentioning, but that will be, yeah, I'm not sure when that will happen. Yeah, I can only apologise for being totally off my game today. I don't know what's wrong with me. Snap out of it, Livy. Snap out of it. Wish I could. Hopefully for my next video I'll be back to my more usual self. Who knows, I've got to go and edit this now so that it'll be nice and soul destroying. So I hope you've had a good week, a couple of May bank holidays, hope you've enjoyed those, done lots of reading, lots of chilling out, have a nice time. I don't know, I'm just rambling now. I hope you guys have had a good May bank holiday and a good start to the month. How is your reading going so far this month? Let me know what you guys are reading at the moment, as well as obviously the usual any of these that I've hauled today, if they look interesting, talk about them. But what are you reading at the moment as well? Have a little chat with me down below. I will be hopefully back to my usual self in the next video, which as I say, I'm gonna do a little early May wrap up slash currently reading in a few days time. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you for bearing with me, my frazzled self today. Have a lovely day. I will see you next time. Bye!